Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about the activity series, which is important when we talk about oxidation reduction. The activity series is a listing of different metals in order from the highest reactivity to the lowest reactivity. It's used to determine the products of a single displacement reaction, whereby some metal A will replace another metal B in solution if A is higher in the series. So if we have some sort of metal A that's present as some sort of ion that's in solution, and we have some metal B that's a solid, can we, not, in essence, knock B into solution to where it becomes an ion, and then A then becomes a solid. It falls out of solution. So that's what we're trying to see if that will happen or not. When a metal in elemental form is placed in a solution of another metal salt, it may be more energetically feasible for this elemental metal to exist as an ion and the ionic metal to exist as the element. Therefore, the elemental metal will displace the ionic metal from solution in the two swap places. So this metal A, this is an ion, becomes a metal that's a solid. And what was the solid, this metal B, now becomes the ion. And so um, that's what's taking place. Now there's also counter ions in here that make the solution overall electrically neutral, and those are spectator ions. So a metal can displace metal ions listed below it in the activity series, but not above. For example, zinc is more active than copper. So zinc is right here, and there is copper. And so zinc metal will displace copper ions from solution. And so if we have a solution where we've got some copper ions, we put a piece of zinc in here, what will happen over time is that the zinc will migrate out of the metal, so you have a zinc ions in solution, and the zinc ions will be replaced by copper that's a solid. So that's what's taking place. And this can happen because zinc is above copper. And so look how the reactions are written. They're all writ written as oxidations. Remember, loss of electrons is oxidation. And so it's how much does it want to become an ion? And so for some of this, you can use your everyday knowledge of chemistry. We talk about precious metals. That's what we make jewelry out of. Things like silver and copper and gold and platinum. And why do we make jewelry out of them? Because they don't react. We don't make things out of sodium chloride or lithium or potassium, things like that, because we know that they'll react. They'll dissolve right away. But silver, copper, gold, and platinum are precious metals. And if you look down at the bottom of this chart, you'll see there's copper, silver, mercury, platinum, and gold. They want to stay as the metal, if at all possible. And so that's something to, to keep in mind. So the next example it sort of talks about is that silver cannot displace copper ions from solution. So co silver is below copper, so it cannot displace copper ions from solution. Whereas the opposite would be true. That silver ions would displace copper metal and um, become plated out. And so we could take... piece of copper wire 
and put it in a solution of silver ion, say silver nitrate, and come back over time, and what we would see on that copper wire would be silver growing on that copper wire. And this solution would slowly turn blue over time as copper migrated from in the wire out into the solution. The opposite is not true. If we have silver as our wire and we place it in copper ion, nothing will happen. Silver metal wants to stay at the metal if at all possible. If it's not the metal, if it's the ion, then it wants to become the solid metal that's plated out. So let's look at the following reactions and use the activity series and see if a reaction will take place. It may or may not. If it does, let's write out the products that we would see. If it doesn't, let's say no reaction. So copper and hydrochloric acid. Copper and hydrochloric acid. And so hydrochloric acid you can think of as being the hydrogen ion and copper. Those are the two that we're looking at. And so which one would rather be the ion? H plus would rather be the ion, and copper is below it, it would rather be the metal. And so since copper is already a metal, this one will be no reaction. Silver nitrate and copper ion. We just talked about this in this example. And that's what we have present here in solution is we've got silver ion and nitrate ion and copper metal. Which would rather be the metal? Silver would. Copper would rather be the ion. It's more active. It's higher up. And so we'll have a reaction take place. And so silver metal will be plated out in solution. And then we'll have copper ion in the solution. And so if we balance this guy out, that's what we would need to do to show the actual reaction that's taking place. And nitrate ion is acting as the spectator ion. Gold metal and sodium bromide aqueous. The question is, is gold more active more reactive than sodium ion. Would sodium rather become the metal? We don't even need to look at the chart, as we talked about before, what are the, our precious metals? Gold is one of them. So this wants, gold wants to stay as gold, metal, solid. It doesn't want to become an ion. This is going to be no reaction. But we can look. Here's gold down at the bottom. And here's sodium way up at the top. And sodium much rather would stay as the ion, and it already is the ion. And so it will not displace gold that's below it. Magnesium and copper sulfate. So magnesium... is up here, and copper sulfate is down below. Which one would rather be the ion? The higher up you are, the more you prefer to be the ion. The further down you are, the more you would want to be the metal. And so magnesium is, in fact, above copper. So what will happen is we'll have a single displacement reaction take place, and that the magnesium will go into solution, And the copper will be displaced from solution and become a, the metal, copper solid. Number five, zinc and potassium bromide. So here's zinc, and we're looking for potassium, which is way up top. Potassium and zinc. So which one would rather be the ion? Potassium rather be the ion, or zinc would rather be the ion. So we're looking at this, 
And in this instance, potassium is an ion, and it's up at the top. It would rather be the ion, the way that reaction is written as an oxidation. If zinc is below it, it would rather stay as the metal. No reaction. And lastly, we have iron and platinum 4 chloride. The iron is a solid, the platinum 4 chloride is present in this solution as ions. And so, which is there going to be a reaction that takes place? We can look at the chart, and platinum is way down at the bottom, and iron is sort of in the middle. And so which one would rather be the ion? The one that's further up wants to be the ion. The one that's further down wants to be the pure metal. And so what do we have in our equation? We have iron as being the metal, but it's higher up. It would rather be the ion. So this iron is going to displace the platinum from solution. That's going to be plated out. And then we're going to have iron react with chloride to um, become an ion in solution. It's probably going to be an iron 2 chloride. And so to balance this out, now we've got two chlorines on the product side. We have four on the reactant side. We'll need a two from the platinum chloride. And so we'll put a two there, and that would give us our balanced chemical equation. Activity series can be confusing, but think about where things are on the chart. The higher up you want to be, it wants to become or stay as an ion. The further down the chart you are, the more you want to become or stay as the pure metal. And use your um, everyday chemistry knowledge that copper, silver, platinum and gold want to be metals because they're jewelry. Thanks so much for watching.